I read this morning that United Arab Emirates are, uh, are going to be including Holocaust education now for their uh, mandatory education and as part of their education, which is fantastic. And right? it's fantastic. And the same you have in Morocco. Uh, so right. th that's uh, that's fantastic, but we don't have it in many countries in uh, Europe, for example. Or we don't what, have it. What, is, does that mind? Does that blow your mind that that the Holocaust happened in Europe, just as you said, yeah. like you know, two and a half generations ago, and and they don't have that education? But a country that didn't even recognize my existence is now pushing Holocaust studies on their entire popul young population. I feel like no one's calling them out, right? Like, uh, you know. I, I always say, like, it's fascinating how we allow world leaders to try to criticize Israel publicly, but we don't ever criticize them back. I've been like, hey, you know, anti-Semitism has increased, you know, you know, 30 percent in the United States year over year. No one says anything to the American leadership or publicly. What have you done to combat anti-Semitism? It's only grown under your watch. I feel like we take all of the arrows. We put up a shield or two. We don't fling any back of those trying to. <laughs> those that are responsible for the anti-Semitism in their own nations that are literally doing nothing. They'll just say, oh, it's terrible. Oh, okay. And they won't do anything. And I feel like no one's pushing back. There, There's no pressure campaign. There's no, hey, this politician, hey, leader of this country, anti-Semitism has increased this much. What have you done? You know, it's, it's a Sadiq Khan, a mayor of London. Anti-Semitism has skyrocketed under your leadership. What have you done about it? Prove it. Like they're right. I feel like we allow criticism, but we don't send any back the other way. I feel like there's a problem there. Yeah. No. Uh, first of all, we do call them to action. For example, uh, Ronald Lauder. That, that's what he's doing. Uh, you know, and he he and the group of Lelirus. Uh, now there are good news and bad news in what in what you said. The good news that people in the last few years might be too late. No, not maybe too late. People, but people uh, did woke up. Uh, did wake up, and uh, so you have today major figures in the Jewish world involved. People like uh, Loder, Kraft, uh, Kish, uh, uh, Singer, uh, many, many others are involved in this uh, in this effort, which was not the case before. You know, each one of them uh, did philanthropy and different things, uh, but uh, not not on this. Uh, many organizations uh, came. Uh, Came to the table. The Competent Semitism Movement is a very new organization. It was established only three years ago. I assume they are the most uh, effective today Jewish organization on uh, on, on social media. Uh, right. Very very proactive. It didn't exist. There's one uh, big donor behind them which was not involved in this uh, before that. So so on one hand, uh, really the Jewish leadership. Uh, uh, walk to to deal with these issues because it's became you know at the moment you have all these surveys saying that 25 percent of the employers in the United States uh, won't will never uh, hire a person because uh, uh, he or she is uh, Jewish so th this is really a wake up call and it's not only in the United States it's also in uh, in other in other places so this on the Jewish uh, side on the European leadership side lay leadership side I think that they uh, under started understanding that it's not a Jewish problem. And same thing is not a Jewish problem. It's a problem really for, for everybody. It starts with us, it never ends with us. And uh, so uh, the strategic plan that the European Union adopted a year ago with a budget attached to it and now started rolling into uh, national uh, national levels is something which will bring results at the end of the day, but it will take time and maybe we don't have the time. Because, uh, you know, the question really if uh, Jews will stay in Europe or not. And this, uh, when you ask me why they're worried, the European leaders, that's what worries them. The, the French what? leadership is... That, uh, they're worried, they're worried that what? They, that, that the Jews will emigrate? That the Jews will leave their countries. What do they care? No, they care. On, on this, they care very, very why, much. Why? Why? Six, why? Why? Because the 600 Jews in France is a very important uh, part of the Jewish community, of uh, the French... Uh, uh, society of the French economy of the French social life, political life of uh, of everything. Yeah, but they don't. But w I understand that. But they wouldn't feel it if Jews continue to leave. You know, one percent of the population, two percent of the Jewish population leaves every year or two. It will be slow. And what do they care? And these politicians, it doesn't happen on their watch. We're talking about generational change, unless there's like obviously a war. And then I would assume you know many Jews do everything they could to get out. But I mean. I don't know. I, I'm just, I understand that they care. I think they care uh, intellectually. I think they care a little bit in their heart. 
But I say if you were to put their top like 30 priorities, anything that we're not up there, right? So we're never going to get the attention. They care and they'll tell us what they want to hear and they might believe it. Like we care, it's an integral part of, let's say you were saying France, right? Uh, of our history and of our future and a part of our economy and this and that, et cetera. Yes. But at the same time, they have a million other things, you know, not to mention crime, their economy, you know, their Ill illegal immigration. There are all kinds of other things that they have to deal with. Uh, assimilation, right? They have all kinds of problems in France, right? They have riots all the time. They don't, the media doesn't even cover it anymore. Um, you know, s sexism is on the rise, you know, um, et cetera. So like, I feel like it's never going to be prioritized. They might feed us lip service when we speak to them one-on-one -on -one, and they may mean what they say, but to us, it sounds like music to our ears and we're, pr they're prioritizing it and they might mean it, but they're definitely not prioritizing it. Yeah, no, I disagree. It, it depends. Okay. It's different from country to country, and I'll maybe we'll give you two of examples. Of course, and, and and it's different from political leader to political leader. One country might be terrible now; the next leader might be great, and vice versa. I get that, but I'm yeah. speaking in, in general. Let me give you two examples, and you'll see, and you'll see why yeah. I disagree. Uh, last uh, last month, uh, the Competent Semitism Movement, the Center of Jewish Impact, had the Mayor's uh, Forum in Athens. So I came to the mayor of Athens uh, six, uh, six months before the forum, and I told him, listen, you know, the Athens and Greece is the place where democracy was born. You had the first neo-Nazi uh, party here in uh, Greece, Golden, uh, Golden Dawn. You uh, implemented the legislation. And uh, although you have a very small Jewish community of like 5,000 Jews who live today in, uh, in Greece, we think that the right place to have mayor's uh, forum is in, uh, in Athens. So I came to convince you. He told me in legally, really, literally in five seconds, you don't have to convince me because that's what I want to do. And uh, really, you're very, very welcome. And the fact that we had it like uh, <clears throat> with uh, some 70 mayors and deputy mayors from around the world came in on short uh, notice, including the mayor of New York and uh, some others, and it sent a very strong, uh, sort of strong message. So it shows you two things. A One, strong message to who? So uh, one the main uh, uh, one of the main tools to deal with the anti-Semitism is on the municipality level, on the, on the level of uh, cities, because in many of the places in Europe, uh, the police is reporting to to the mayor. It's not reporting to the kind of ministry of police. It's reporting it's uh, on a local uh, local level. So once the mayor of New York flew, especially for this meeting, or Richmond, or some other cities, uh, Beverly Hills, or or Kitchener right. uh, from Moldova. They came and flew in to this meeting and showed message to, to all the uh, other mayors in, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in their own forums. So, right. But are there uh, pledges to make any changes or is it like exchange ideas? I feel like, you know what I mean? I did my good duty and then continue on their day-to-day -day responsibilities. No, and then it becomes an afterthought. Tell, then it just yeah, becomes no, another statistic. That, yeah, I can't tell you that uh, when the mayor of Beverly Hills comes back to Beverly Hills, this is the thing that now she's doing like 99% of her time. I didn't it's say 99. I, I asked like, is there something that wasn't being done? And now, okay, all the mayors that came, here's a new plan. Let's all do X, Y, or Z. We're all going to put a budget towards this and this. We're all going to put, you know what I mean? Like who's going to pledge to put, let's say, to, you know, to provide extra security for synagogues as a pledge to put that in your budget for you to have now indefinitely. What are you doing, you know, for educate? Are you, can you review all of your textbooks that you're providing to ensure that there isn't anti-Semitism? If someone's reporting a teacher that's anti-Semitic, can we're going to set up these kind of steps to ensure, you know what I mean, that they're being investigated and immediately put on, let's say, even paid suspension. Are there these kind of things that walk out so we know that there's actual steps or is it kind of, we come together, we feel good, but then obviously we go back home and we have our million other responsibilities and things that are thrown on our desk from all the people that report to us as mayors. And then, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, not intended, right? hundred percent good intent, but then it becomes deprioritized. Yeah. You just put an acting, uh, acting plan and the uh, acting points, which we did with them in uh, Athens as well. Maybe a little bit different right. point, but in, in the same right, direction. Curious, right. uh, it, it comes back okay. to what you said before. Everything is about the follow up. You know, they right. came to a conference. It was nice two days. You know, they saw Athens. They saw the Acropolis. We discussed for two days anti-Semitism. The very fact that we were sitting in the room for two days discussing anti-Semitism by itself and the interface dialogue by itself is very, very important uh, event. Something is there now. But the question uh -huh. is really uh, now the follow-up. And that's what the organizations like Combat Anti-Semitism Movement are planning to do. So it's going to be another follow-up. I'll give you another, an example. If, uh, we had about a year ago Balkans Forum. 
they you know it reached out to some 20 million uh, people around the world it's uh, a Muslim majority country in the center of uh, Europe. This is the place where, you know, most of the kind of uh, uh, big problems of Europe started in, uh, well, many of them started in uh, in the Balkan countries. So we had it uh, with the heads of the parliaments of uh, different countries in uh, in the region of uh, Montenegro, Kosovo, you know, uh, North Macedonia, all these uh, countries. And uh, here we see, uh, a few months ago, two or three months ago, the Prime Minister of Albania came to visit uh, for a state visit in Israel. And what is the thing that he wanted to have a gala dinner about? It was about anti-Semitism. And he came here and in June. We are planning now a follow-up of this meeting on a more practical level. <clears throat> because last time we had legislations, now we, hold, we wanted to have it on the on the government level. So that, that's what's uh, going to happen now. It's not like it's going to resolve all the issues. But we put it strongly on the table. We put a spot on uh, a spot on this. And we have to we have to follow to follow up. When I say we, it's the, both the Jewish communities uh, around the world and the state of Israel. And the state of Israel has a very important role to play here, and which is not uh, and it's not playing it uh, playing it enough.